Hello! Smith takes a bite of a crunchy carrot while sitting on a bench in the middle of a deserted street late at night. His attention is suddenly drawn to a pregnant blonde woman in a yellow dress as she hurriedly runs past, holding her round belly and screaming in unbearable pain. A furious thug drives after the stranger at breakneck speed, shouting threats at the fleeing girl. The bandit stops the car and with a loaded gun at the ready, follows the victim into a dark alley. Determined to save the defenseless stranger, Smith follows the bandit. He has no idea that he is getting involved in a long, bloody story that includes not only local criminals, but also powerful, corrupt politicians. Smith follows an armed bandit who is about to attack a pregnant woman. The man prevents the massacre by firmly shoving an unfinished carrot down the bastard's throat. Eat your vegetables. But this is not the end of the unexpected confrontation. Three armed thugs in leather jackets suddenly appear from around the corner, emptying their magazines in an attempt to shoot the victim. At Smith's command, the stranger hides behind the door while he slides across the floor on the spilled oil and kills all the assailants one by one, as well as their backup group, the four bandits who are cowardly hiding outside. In the adjacent hangar where the girl is hiding, Smith is immediately forced to help the girl deliver the baby. At the same time, he shoots back at the enemies approaching from all sides, showering empty shells on the woman. Once the situation calms down, the man helps the newborn free itself and cuts the umbilical cord with a precise shot. A skilled shooter, a man with glasses and a cool gun named Hertz, unexpectedly appears among the attackers. He almost manages to finish off Smith from an ambush, after which the man hurriedly disappears into hiding with the girl and child in the arms. Hertz stalks the couple along a trail of thick blood on the floor and approaches the victim. At this moment, Smith swiftly attacks him from behind and takes away his weapon. The man tries to find out from the villain why they are going after the girl. In response, Hertz merely sneers, pointing to the fingerprint scanner on the barrel of his gun, which prevents Smith from pulling the trigger. Smith breaks out of the trap by hitting Hertz sharply on the head. After grabbing the girl, he makes his way to the stairwell to the whistling of the bullets of the villain's accomplices. Although he himself manages to get out alive, the stranger is shot in the head during the shootout. The man leaves the girl's body behind, and after thinking for a second, takes the newborn baby with him. Once on the roof, Smith finds himself trapped by Hertz's armed gang. To save himself and the child, he jumps through the window of a nearby building under incessant gunfire from the thugs, and eventually escapes from his pursuers. The man tries to escape, but with a newborn baby in his arms, he attracts the attention of passersby, and after a quick look around, notices that he is being followed. Realizing that he will inevitably have to fight again, Smith hides in the toilet of a deserted train station and freezes in the stall in an ambush. The unknown stalker finds him there and makes it clear that if he simply takes the baby, then nobody will get hurt. But Smith refuses to negotiate and immediately engages in a firefight, as a result of which he manages to get away and take the newborn with him, leaving the stranger alive as well. Hertz calls upon all of his bloodhounds, who report to him that the object is located in the city park. Smith arrives there in hopes of leaving the baby in a crowded place where someone would notice it. He leaves the baby on a merry-go-round and moves a short distance away, and almost immediately, an unknown woman notices the crying child. The problem seems to be solved when the kind-hearted passerby unexpectedly gets shot. Smith notices Hertz with a sniper rifle pointed at the baby, and his conscience once again prevents him from leaving the defenseless child in danger. He spins the merry-go-round with precise shots at the metal structure, thus preventing Hertz from aiming accurately. And after deftly snatching the baby, he quickly escapes from his pursuers. Realizing that the child must be fed, Smith arrives at a brothel and goes to see his acquaintance, Donna Quintano. After unceremoniously kicking her client out, the man hands the hungry child to the woman and offers $5,000 for Donna to look after him for a couple of weeks. However, the girl, who had recently lost her child, firmly refuses the offer under the pretext of her suspicion that Smith may have stolen the baby. Hertz, meanwhile, realizes that Smith will be looking for a way to get breast milk and instantly figures out where he would go. Soon, the villain also appears in Donna's bedroom. He tries to extract information about the fugitive from the girl, threatening to kill her. The agonizing torture is interrupted by Smith himself, who has calculated Hertz's steps well in advance. He reappears unexpectedly with a gun to the man's head, just as the criminal has emptied his entire clip. Smith throws the now unarmed Hertz into the corridor. There, he tries to attack Smith with a shard of broken mirror, but he ruthlessly fires bullets into Hertz's chest. After taking out his enemies, Smith takes the baby and its new mommy, who is now also in danger with him. When the trio, in hope of escaping pursuit, steal a nearby car, Hertz regains consciousness. His body armor has saved him from death. Rising to his feet, 
He immediately orders that all the thugs in the neighborhood be summoned in order to retrieve the child and finally get rid of the hated Smith. In the meantime, Smith takes Donna and the baby to his house, hoping to find shelter there. However, while the couple are figuring things out upstairs, the cunning Hertz already appears at the back door, having once again tracked down Smith and brought with him a group of 50 bandits for support. While the villain silently picks the lock, Smith, trying to reconcile with his girlfriend, changes the baby's diaper and offers to name him Oliver. After handing Donna the baby, he switches the TV channels to see if there are any news reports about the mess they find themselves in. The news channels alternate with the heavy music channel, and Smith notices that as soon as Oliver hears it, he immediately stops crying and calms down. And the bandits have already secured all the entrances of his house and have received instructions from Hertz not to leave anyone alive. After sneaking to the second floor unnoticed, the mercenaries open fire, and only Smith's quick reactions save him, Donna, and Oliver from death. While the girl escapes on the elevator, Smith, with Oliver in his arms, fires back at the advancing enemies. After taking down the gang at the upper floor, he dashes for the exit. Through the stairwells, the man descends on a lifeline, shooting thugs in the process, among whom he unexpectedly spots Hertz, alive and well, whom he once again fails to kill. Hertz lets a dog loose on Smith's trail, but the man still manages to get away, distracting the dog with a decoy. After getting rid of the chase, the man takes Donna to the only heavy metal club in town. He believes that's the place where Oliver's mother used to live. That's why he doesn't cry when he's listening to some headbangers bash. Smith's hunch turns out to be correct. At the entrance, the pair find a pile of diaper boxes. After confronting the owner of the place, the partners find out that he rents out the second floor. In the locked room, they find several dead bodies and a picture of three women, one of whom was Oliver's mother. After searching through all the rooms, Smith stumbles upon the cleaner, who is reporting to his boss what happened over the phone. From the conversation, Smith also learns that a secret organization of a birthing factory was operating here. Avoiding a meeting with the cleaner, Smith and Donna continue to search the premises and find a destroyed laboratory. From the organic matter left there, Smith realizes that the babies have been raised specially as donors for a bone marrow transplant to an unknown recipient. But now there is a man who wants to stop these plans. So a gang of ruthless thugs wants to kill Oliver. Once out of the lab, Smith and Donna head for a hotel. They are going to wait for the news report on what's going on. And thanks to the media coverage, they will finally be safe. But the couple are once again attacked by mercenaries. And after finishing off all their pursuers, Smith and Donna decide to leave their shelter. The man notices that the Raiders are armed with a new model of Hammerson pistols, which won't be on the market for the next six months. And this clue gives him an idea of where to go next. Smith plans to go into the enemy's lair alone, leaving Donna and baby Oliver in safety. He hides them in an M24 tank, installed as a monument in the city museum. He himself goes to the Hammerson Weapon Factory and manages to sneak onto the premises unnoticed. Hiding behind boxes full of brand new guns, the hero overhears a conversation between Hammerson and Hertz, in which they voice their suspicions about his identity. It turns out that the cunning Hertz has long started to gather information on Smith, which he immediately spills to his partner while feeding his beloved dog, Duchess. Hammerson is skeptical about the information received about the child of a migrant gunsmith who was recruited by the special forces. All you got is a man with no name, riding into town on a pale horse, dispensing his own brand of justice. While the accomplices are calmly discussing how they should bury both the baby and Smith without a trace, the man quietly installs booby traps made out of their own weapons around the hangar. Having finished their preparations, he shows himself to his enemies, provoking a firefight. The smug Hertz, surrounded by an armed horde, starts to negotiate, offering a deal to keep his life in exchange for the child. But Smith stays true to himself and rejects any talks. In response, Hertz tries to put psychological pressure on the man and happily tells him that he knows how his wife and son were murdered. However, this does not have the desired effect. Gathering all of his hatred, Smith starts the fight. Using the traps he had prepared, he easily neutralizes all armed guards from the improvised control room, tracking the movement of his enemies on the cameras. He leaves Hertz and Hammerson alive, however, and escapes from the hangar covering himself with a burst of machine gun fire. Smith returns to Donna and tells her that it's Hammerson who's trying to kill the baby, but the partners are still unsure who is the customer that needs the baby's bone marrow transplant. Suddenly, Smith sees a picture of Senator Rutledge on the front page of the used newspaper they used instead of a diaper, and realizes that this is the man they are looking for. If he's elected president, he'll put Hammerson out of business. Smith realizes that Donna and Oliver are in great danger, 
because not only the weapon trader is after them, but also the government. The man suggests that the girl get out of town with the child on a bus with hippies, as airports and train stations are probably already under surveillance. Smith honestly admits that he may not have time to deal with his adversaries before she leaves, and it is best for him not to know at what stop Donna will get off, so that he cannot give away this information in case of torture. The couple head for a bus stop, but right away it turns out that a group of armed bandits in an armored truck is already on their tail. Smith forces Donna to escape, and grabbing little Oliver himself, darts off the bridge into the car parked below, hiding Oliver under the front seat. He tries to evade the chase. The mercenaries shoot up his car and knock the gun out of his hands. Trying to retrieve his gun, Smith momentarily loses control of the situation and fails to dodge a powerful blow from the side. His car flips over and Oliver ends up lying on the road that a large van is speeding through. While Smith is busy dealing with the ruthless killers, Hertz appears on the horizon, trying to finish what his accomplice has started and runs over the roll lying in the middle of the road. However, it turns out to be nothing more than a doll. At this time, Donna takes the real Oliver out of the shelter and goes with him to the train station. Following his plan, Smith contacts the senator's security and by manipulating information about the child, asks for an appointment. It turns out that Rutledge himself has been expecting his call. And a couple of hours later, the man finds himself on his private plane bound for North Carolina. The senator's sickly appearance confirms Smith's suspicions. Rutledge compliments Smith's professionalism when the latter suddenly notices the Duchess's hair on his pants and instantly realizes that he is trapped. The former adversaries have reached a mutual beneficial agreement. Hammerson will continue to sell arms and help them find the child, and Rutledge will be cured and become president. Smith immediately takes Rutledge hostage, as Hertz and Hammerson appear behind him. However, a gun to the corrupt senator's throat cools their fervor, and the man takes the hostage to the vestibule, from where he descends with him through a hatch into the cargo bay. There, he ties up Rutledge to the hatch and executes him with a shot to the head, jumping off the plane with a parachute. Upon landing, Smith makes his way to a nearby hangar and passes out. He regains consciousness at Hertz gunpoint, while Donna and Oliver show up at the bus stop to leave the town for good. Hertz brutally tortures the prisoner to get information about where the girl and child are. After breaking Smith's fingers, the villain intends to cut out his eyes and brings a sharp scalpel to his face. This becomes his fatal mistake. Smith lunges in an attack, and after knocking off Hertz, finishes off his accomplices and Hammerson. He then sends Hertz to the afterlife in an inventive way and hurries out of the house with the Duchess. After bandaging his hands and without any idea of where to look for Donna, Smith heads to the same bus stop. His gut tells him where to get off during the ride, and at a roadside cafe, he finds his friend along with Oliver. As always, you'll find the name in the movie in the description of the video. Meanwhile, let us know in the comments. Did you guess that there will be a trap on the senator's plane? And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next awesome retelling. Watch an interesting movie in a few minutes without rewind? Easy! We got a great looking audience tonight. The Sweet Popcorn channel has a mega convenient format waiting just for you. Short retellings of movies, from auteur films to Hollywood blockbusters. Pick up your unlimited ticket by clicking the subscribe button.